So here's the deal. I have done plenty of CR-10S review videos. So if you've seen any of them, you might as well just skip this one. It's fine. However, if you're in the market for a printer or you're really looking to see how long this guy has lasted for me, this video is specifically about, I've used it for three months, a thousand hours, and I want to show you what wear and tear it has seen. So if you're interested in seeing that, looking to buy one, already have one, curious of what to expect to break, this video is for you. If you want some awesome models and me making stuff, don't worry, got some really fun stuff in the works or catch up with other videos, made some pretty cool stuff recently. What's up you guys, my name is Anton. I do content on all things 3D printing. If you enjoy 3D printing content, tutorials, help on 3D printing, watching me make just really cool models, or just sign up for my terrible fails and an interesting journey to watch me 3D print, hit the sub button down below. You won't regret it, you'll enjoy the content, I promise you. If you enjoyed this video, it helps you out, smash the thumbs up. But yeah, this is from a perspective because my first video was kind of almost a first impressions. I just was starting 3D printing. This was my thoughts on it as a noob. Now I've put in a thousand hours. Yes, that's a big number, a thousand hours on this 3D printer, which is equivalent to literally running it nonstop for a month and a half. And it's been over that. And I, I mean, it's been way over that. This guy would print something in the morning and as soon as it's done, I set it up on the next print, go to work, come back, set the next one. I did not let him stop printing for forever. See exhibit A. I've also printed smaller stuff like Baby Yoda. Bam. He was uh, a smaller fun print. This is 200% Baby Yoda. You can get it for free on Thingiverse. I've also done stuff such as Bam, this uh, weapon plate. Did a video on it, just check it out. It's kind of interesting if you want to make one of these yourself. I have really put this printer through it all and I want to give this review as from a perspective of what lasts, what kind of issues have I had? Because there are some different things that have changed since my first review of is the longevity on this printer good? So if you're looking on either getting this one or you already have one of these and you're like, what's something I could possibly foresee breaking or you think of starting a 3D printing farm, is this a viable option? This video is for you. So I'm gonna start out with the bad stuff. Yeah, this guy. Um, as you see right there, that uh, is, just completely torn off base. Now, it's not like it's very difficult to fix. You can literally put painter's tape over it or something like that. It didn't last. And I promise you, I'm not difficult on my electronics. This is just a thing that happens with 3D printing. If you print a lot, it gets really stuck. And after a while, it gets chipped away and the hole gets bigger and bigger. So if you're planning on printing for a good while, you're probably gonna wanna have to either switch that plate out, expect that to break down, or just go with what I did, and that's a wham bam solution. Which I like, but well, we'll get to that in a second. Gone are the days that I use this. Now this is not a wham bam review video at all. Um, although I'm doing a video of just installing and what I think on it and some tips and tricks with it, because it's not actually a very straightforward thing. Um, installing it is very simple. The problem is this, uh, this material that it's made off is not very good for adhesion and it's very difficult to quite calibrate that well so uh you need to make sure your bed is leveled so yeah the first problem i had is that build plate just destroying and uh that's something you want to look into number two i mentioned this before and i'll mention it still the only other thing that's broken is the fan duct now i did put out a link for uh a replacement that you can print out warning though the version one and version two of the cr 10s pros are actually slightly different and the link that you're going to want to do is the version 4 for version 2 uh, printers. And even then, you might have, you're going to have to sand in. I had to do some of that. And you don't want to print it out of the PLA. It's, it's going to melt. I mean, you can, but you're going to have to keep switching those out. The other thing that has been an issue after printing so long on this printer that broke for me is actually, you know, you see how this filament is here? It gets this tight. And so right here, you're getting a really tight angle. And I've had filament snap and break and then a print stop because... It thought it ran out of filament. Um, now, I was able to remedy the solution. I just made sure I wound this guy up and there's no tangles, a little bit tighter. It was cheaper 3D filament, so that's also a thing. Watch what kind of materials you're using. And that only happened once. So that, that will happen. You can 3D print a kind of simpler solution to make sure it sticks out a little bit through the snap like that. Keeps everything nice, less dust build up. I haven't had a lot of dust build up. It only snapped once. So I haven't addressed the issue because it's only happened once. The other one is 
yeah, you know, I had really loud fans. I disliked that. I upgraded them to Noctuna fans. Of course, I'll provide the links. But the uh, fans, like, you know, right here, I didn't replace them. And I thought, maybe I will want to. I've been using it, and it's been no problem. It is in a room right next to it that I sleep in, but it's not in my bedroom. I don't know if I'm going to put this in your bedroom. It's really loud, difficult. Um, and it's fine. It hasn't bothered me. I'm usually on the computer with it right next to me, and it doesn't bother me. So... That's nice, but keep in mind if you don't upgrade it, it probably will get annoying. So the only other thing that I will say after using it for over a thousand hours, the error messages do work. So such as overheating or something like that going on, I only had one error message pop up once. It wasn't a thermal runoff, although the version two does come that with that installed already. So you don't have to mess around with your firmware or anything like that, which is nice. I don't remember what the message was, unfortunately. It was some sort of error code, and I thought nothing of it, and I didn't really think about this video in hindsight that it would be useful to mention after all these hours of printing of all the error codes. There's only one, and what was really cool is actually I just shut off the printer, turned it back on, and the print would actually resume. Now, I didn't know that, so I uh, kind of pulled the plug on the printer, and it didn't let it do that, but it does have resume print functions, which is my last and final thing that is bad and good. Um, this resume print thing has worked very well for me. No problem at all. When electricity, which has been knocked out before for me, it would resume. I have had my prints slightly not perfect, which is bad, uh, with the resume print, slightly. I mean, there's a slight layer of light, and that's me being very, very critical. So uh, I honestly don't think you can do a better resume print option, but I just want you to keep in mind that if your power goes out, don't expect your print to come out absolutely perfect, like the hell of it just out. So the good stuff, right? I love this printer. I bashed on it for a good little uh, minute. I actually like this printer a lot, and I've been saying that. And so if you're looking at a printer that you're a beginner and a new, this guy can do it if he's in your budget. If he's not, look at an Ender. Ender will be fine. They're about $200. You can get a newer version, one with a little bit more upgrades for $250 range. I got this one for $700. Uh, about a fourth of it a third year ago, a little while back. Uh, I've seen it for as low as $600. This is a great printer if you're starting out, if you have that budget. Uh, you, because you can print everything with it. Small, big, large, different kinds of uh, materials are supported with this printer. People ask me all the time. I haven't experimented thoroughly, so that's why I don't talk about it too much. I don't consider making one or two prints me being knowledgeable about the subject. Uh, but this printer is supposedly capable of PETG, ABS, that's toxic, so make sure you have an enclosure. And it is technically capable of flexible filaments, but you're gonna wanna get the very tough ones because with this dual ext your extruder that it comes with, which is great by the way, and this lasts very well, um, it can jam some stuff when you have flexible filament. The rest of the stuff, it's fine, and that's a great thing. I'm not gonna rage and talk about how I love the fact that the motherboard still works, you know, that's supposed to happen, but I have put this guy through a lot of work. Nothing has gotten loose. Nothing has really broken down. Everything has been stable and perfect. The auto bed leveling is nice. Now, if you're doing a 3D printing world, I want you to understand that auto bed leveling just compensates for the minor differences your bed has. You still have to level it, make sure it's really level. And that's very, very, very important in 3D printing and successes, I've learned. Uh, also a reminder, you probably should level your bed. You probably haven't done it in a while if you watch this. You're welcome. Uh, but you do, I do it about every two to three weeks, once a month. Depends what you do with your printer. If you don't move them around, it's fine. Um, everything else is great. None of the springs are broken, none of the knobs are broken. My nozzle has been great. And I switched out to the six millimeter. I've been kind of stick, sticking with that one. It's been fine. It's made out of durable stuff and I love it. it if you want to do this for a printing farm, although it's not very cost effective, but if it's in your budget and you want to be able to do bulky stuff in one print, you can definitely get a whole bunch of these. If you're starting out, this one's great. If you're planning on putting a lot of miles, if you could say, on a 3D printer, this guy will last and you won't have to replace stuff. Like this tubing has been perfect for me. I have had, you know, the fans have been fine. Nothing has broken on this printer at all. And I honestly was expecting a lot more things to go wrong with this printer with so many hours being put into it. So that's my review of it after a thousand hours being put in, which is equivalent to over a month and a half nonstop. Um, I love it. I strongly recommend it. Do keep in mind of the things that do mess up. Hope you enjoy this video. If it helped you out in any sort of way, smash thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.